What is up guys, Coding Jesus here. Guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be going over a strategy detailed in one of CME's public patents. Now this is a publicly available known strategy as detailed by the CME, but the strategy is very technical in nature. So that's why I'm here. I'm gonna be breaking down the strategy for you guys, explaining what was done and how it was detailed in this patent, and then why the strategy was so unfair that the CME needed to build this patent in order to write about a protocol that they implemented to actually prevent the strategy from being implemented on the technical level. What is a strategy and why was it considered a cheese strategy? So before we get into the whiteboard, which I'll show you guys on my screen in a second, I want to talk about what a cheese strategy is. If you are a video gamer and you've played StarCraft, for example, you have heard the term cheese strategy. A cheese strategy is one that focuses on exploits and bugs per se, as opposed to actually playing the game in a way that is good spirited and fair. So you're not necessarily cheating, you're not hacking, you're not going into the source code and playing around with numbers. You just have such a detailed understanding of the game and its mechanics that you're able to come up with strategies that are more favorable to you as opposed to the other player or the other opponent that might have a more surface level understanding of the video game. Okay, that's exactly what happened here. So what is this strategy? This strategy is called front loading as detailed in the patent. Once again, this patent's publicly available. They detail everything for you to read and you can read about it in the description box below. I will link it. You might've heard about front running and you might think front loading is front running, but they are totally separate concepts, okay? Let's take a look at my screen and I'm gonna break it down for you guys. I wrote the first couple of slides here and we'll see whether or not we need to actually add more slides. Okay, let's make myself a little bigger and we might need to shrink myself a little later. Okay, so we have two slides over here that I'm gonna help you understand what front loading is and how quantitative developers made a ton of money based off this strategy. The first thing you need to understand is the OSI model in networking, okay? I probably lost another half of people just by mentioning that because they might think it's scary. Let me break it down for you guys very simply. The internet isn't one global single layer of a thing. The internet is made up of seven layers. The most basic, kind of the deepest layer is the physical layer of the internet. That focuses on all the copper wires and all the physical actual cables that move from place to place that transfer information. You then have the application layer at the top of the OSI model. This is like my actual computer that's consuming data. It's consuming maybe streaming data for a, a YouTube video or maybe Skype data that is being sent to me that um, helps me uh, you know, video chat or video conference with other people. And in the middle, there's something called the transport layer. And the transport layer can be made up of a couple of different protocols. And the two most popular ones are TCP and UDP. This exploit, guys, this strategy front loading, which I'll show you how it worked in a second, is based off TCP. But before we actually talk about what front loading is, you need to understand how TCP works, okay? All data and all information sent from a trader to an exchange, an exchange from a trader, most of it is going to be TCP. Okay, there are some UDP related data, usually market data is UDP, but we're focusing on strategies related to order entry and strategies used to predict the future before the future actually happens. Okay, so let's talk about TCP in that context, that backdrop. TCP has a couple of characteristics. Okay, the first characteristic of, of, of TCP is that it is a reliable connection oriented protocol. What does reliable mean? Reliable means that if, for example, I communicate something to you and you don't really understand what I said, you're going to ask me, hey, can you say that again? I didn't hear you the first time. Okay. As opposed to a non-reliable protocol in which I say something to you and you just, you know, ignore me and pretend that you didn't hear it or you just keep on going with the conversation. In TCP, the reliability comes with sequence numbers and ACK sequence numbers. So I will tell you the number is one and you will say, I have received the number one. And then I will tell you the number is two and you will say, I have received the number two. Now, if I tell you the number is three and I don't hear it, you will say, what is the next number? And I will repeat the next number is three and we will continue. Okay. The next characteristic of TCP guys, and this is going to be very important for understanding the strategy is that it's streaming based. So I communicate information to you and you communicate information back, right? It's two way stream based communication and the streaming in particular is in order. It's not possible for you to hear things out of order. So if I say one and you say, I heard one, then I say three, you're gonna say, wait, wait, hold up. Where's two? Don't, don't tell me anything about three before I hear back about two. Okay. And the last and probably most important uh, property or characteristic of TCP as it relates to 
this strategy is the fact that TCP has no message boundaries. What do I mean by that? Well, I can tell you, for example, that I'm going to say a sentence that's going to be made up of three words. And you say, okay, I'm ready for that sentence. So I say the first two words and you're like, okay, well, I'm waiting for the third word. What's the third word? You're not going to continue until you hear that third word. And there is no actual boundaries to my sentence. So I can say the first word, I can say all three words and you can hear the first word and then the next two words. Or you can hear the first two words, then there's a pause, and then you hear the third word. Now, how does this relate to trading? Okay, this is where the interesting part comes into play. Well, a bunch of very smart quantitative developers, which I have here, okay, a firm, this is a quantitative trader, a quantitative developer, decided that they can exploit the properties of the TCP uh, layer of the network stack. Now, what happens is this transport layer will not pass any information up to the application layer until certain criteria are met. One of those criteria is that a message is completed. What do I mean by that? Let's say I tell you, I'm going to give you, like in the example we just saw, a sentence with three words. And you only hear the first two words. Before you do anything, before you process, before that application does anything with that information, it's going to wait and say, give me the third word. I need to hear about it. Okay? Give me that third word. Now, in the world of trading, a trader can take advantage of that. A quantitative developer that's very smart can take advantage of that. What they can do is they can craft a message. Okay, message one and message two. Okay? They can craft a message that is not complete. So 99% of the message is complete. Okay, so you have, um, you know, this is, I'm bad with drawing, so I'm sorry if this isn't super straight. This is the message, and this is 99% of message one. Let me actually use the pen that I have here. It'll probably be a little better, okay? So this, this is missing. And then I have message two, so this is message one. Okay, this is a lot easier. Um, and then I have my message two. And message two is also 99% complete, okay? Now, what a quantitative developer will do is, let's say this is the exchange's matching engine and this is the firm. They will open up two sessions, so two separate TCP connections two sessions with the exchange. This will be session one. This will be session two. Message one will be sent on session one and message two will be sent on session two. Okay. Now what they will do is they will send 99% of the first message to the matching engine on session one and 99% of the second message to the matching engine on session two. Now, because the message is not complete, okay, the TCP layer here this is the app layer. The massing engine is the app layer. The TCP layer is going to say like, hey, where is the last 1%? Okay? And it's just going to wait there. So what a trader will do or a quantitative developer is they will say, for example, there's going to be an interest rate decision. Now, I either want to buy or sell this product given Powell's announcement. Okay? So they will have some event feed here that they're waiting on. Before they know whether Powell comes out as, you know, dovish or hawkish, they will send a message on a one session that will say buy, buy, and the other one will say sell. So this message is already preloaded on the exchange's TCP network stack. It's literally like right beside the actual application, Okay. And what they will do is they will, and what the app, the TCP stack will say is, well, I'm still waiting for this last 1% of the message. And how will it know that the message is incomplete? Well, when you send a TCP message, you specify the size of that message and also the sequence number. So I will say that, you know, this message, let's say it's 10 bytes long and this one's also 10 bytes long. Well, I will say to the TCP stack, um, you know, the last message was sequence number 100 and this message is 10 bytes, so you should expect us to now have uh, 10 additional bytes in the TCP buffer. But the TCP buffer says, well, hey, dude, I only got nine, right? So it does 10 minus nine, and it says, well, I'm missing one byte. And what this TCP stack will do is it will keep saying, send me back that one byte. How does it do that? Well, what it will do is it will do 100 plus nine, and it will tell this guy over here, hey buddy, I've acknowledged that you've sent me 109 bytes, not 
uh, not equals, okay, that's a really bad drawing, not equals 110. So I'm telling you that I've sent you 110, and you're telling me, hey, I've only recognized 109. Send me that one byte. Send me that one byte. So I'm going to wait until you send me that one byte, and then I'll proceed. Okay? Now, what's going to happen is that these orders will be preloaded on the exchange right beside the matching engine. And when the event feed tells you either uh, hawkish or dovish, then you're going to send that one last byte to complete either the session one message one or session two message two. But in fact, it's a little different than that because you're going to send the completed byte on both of them, but one of them will be corrupted and one of them will not be corrupted. What do I mean by that? Well, every TCP message also contains a header that contains a checksum that will, that will assess the integrity of this message. Okay? So the first nine bytes are considered valid bytes, and you can either send a invalid last byte or a valid last byte. If I, for example, want to end up selling based off uh, the event feed, then what I will do is I will send a corrupt byte for the message that I don't want to send, and I will send a valid byte for the message that I do want to send. By send, I mean that I want the exchange to accept because 99% of the message has already been sent. In fact, here it's 90% because it's 9 out of 10, but you guys get my point. All right, and that will invalidate one message and it will validate the other message. Now, why is this so powerful? Because reacting to an event before it happens by preloading the message on the exchange's TCP stack means that I need to send less information when I actually hear about the actual news. Therefore, I'm able to execute on this a lot quicker. Think about it like this. What's quicker? Somebody that is waiting at the end of the finish line with one foot behind the finish line waiting for the gun to go off or a guy at the starting line waiting for the gun to go off? Obviously, the guy that's one foot away from the end line. Okay? This is the chief strategy. This is a strategy that made developers tens of millions of dollars, maybe even billions. I don't know how, how much size people put on this. They don't actually mention that in the patent, but they mention all these details. Everything about this is in this patent right here and it's publicly available, okay? So this isn't some like secret sauce. This is all thing that's available, but because most people aren't in the space, they actually don't know how to like find patents like this and they're not just really aware that patents like these exist, okay? So this is all public, but I'm kind of just breaking down for you guys what the actual contents of this patent means in layman's terms. Now, what did the exchange do to actually remedy this? Well, they realize this is a problem. They realize this is optimistic behavior. It's not necessarily cheating. Well, eh, depends on how you interpret it. It's not necessarily hacking. That's definitely not allowed. But it's optimistic and it's kind of like cheesy, cheese strategy, okay? What they did is they said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna change the rule set here. We're gonna change the way that this game is played. So they said, I'll use the wrong things. They said, okay, well, let's say you send me half a message. Realistically, they're going to send 99% of the message. Let's say they say half one. And this is time equals zero. This is time equals negative one. Okay. They said that time equals zero is when I hear about the event. That's like, oh, when Powell says hawkish or dovish or whatever he says. When he says good afternoon, that's a hawkish thing. Okay, this is the first half. This is on the exchange already before any information about the event has occurred. This is like the buy or the sell. What they say is when they receive the second half at time equals zero, they're going to apply a penalty on this message in terms of microseconds before, the actual, uh, before this is actually routed to the trading engine. I'm going to say TE for trading engine or matching engine, whatever you want to call it. So this is time equals zero, and this is measured in microseconds. And so they will say, well, guys, at T micro three, this full message is going to be shipped to the trading engine. And they did some internal research, and they realized that three microseconds is long enough to make optimistic message behavior not profitable or not worthy. And in fact, I think that they actually go a step further. I'm not on the compliance side, right? So, and I don't think this was mentioned in the patent, but I think they will actually also fine you 
a legally binding fine on you if you violate this as well. So if they notice that you're doing this, and you might think that you're cool because, you know, for, it's still somehow profitable, even though they research, research that three microseconds is way, way too long of a wait to even make this profitable. If you still do this, it's just more processing time for them. It's just more resources that they're using, trying to put, you know, discipline you. So they'll actually fine you, I believe. All right. Okay, guys, hopefully you found that interesting. Hopefully uh, some of you are still here. I know a lot of you guys uh, like to learn about exchange microstructure. This was a more detailed approach. There's literally 30 pages of this in here, and I just broke it down for you guys in a very simple and easy to understand manner. If you guys would like to speak to me one-on-one -on -one about the world of quantitative trading, I do consulting, I do resume reviews, um, I help people break into the space, whether you're a trader, researcher, developer, etc. Mock interviews, uh, primarily technical and behavioral for developers and primarily just behavioral for researchers and, and traders. But I can talk to you guys about anything you'd like to pay me to talk to you guys about. Link in the description box below. If you want to see this video early, guys, Patreon. Uh, I, re I post all my videos at least a day early for patrons, sometimes up to a week early. And if you guys would like to follow me behind the scenes, uh, my own personal life, not just quant stuff. Lately, I've just been posting a ton of motorcycle stuff. You can do so on my Instagram. That's where I uh, just go behind the scenes of my life, show you guys who I am, I guess, behind this YouTube channel. Uh, so yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and share it. Thank you for watching. Cheers.